Hi, my name's Dave Milton and today we'll be looking how to service the LVM leak valve. Today we'll look at the LVM valve, how to strip it, how to reassemble it, the parts available for the valve and the tools required to do the job. On the table we have what is required uh, to do the job. You're going to need some alcohol or isopropanol, you need some lymph-free cloth, an M10 spanner, two Allen keys, a three and a four, a very sad looking valve, some gloves, and there's two kits here which I will explain more about. This kit here is what we call a diaphragm kit, which is a ZLVM DSK. This contains the movement assembly and a gold seal. The reason you would use this is if the valve has been baked extensively and has basically died because it's been over baked. The reason this will fail is because of the small washers on here could have become soft and don't react correctly with the valve when it's closing off. The other kit we've got here is the ZLVM PSK which is just simply a pad, a gold seal and a spanner to do the job. Uh, this is the most likely is the kit that you will be buying, so we'll explain a bit more about these. We, so we have the valve here, and we're going to use this kit, which is the pad, the gold seal and the spanner. The first thing you have to do is strip the valve down to get the old parts out, uh, which is quite a simple job. When you're putting the new items actually inside the valve, then you should be wearing gloves. Some people wear gloves for the whole process, but for the stripping down I will just do it with bare hands and then use the gloves for when I actually assemble the parts inside the valve. So the first thing you have to do would be release the lever tension. Uh, in this case the lever is all loose, I've done it in worst case scenario so you can see what happens. So the first thing we need to do is remove the dome headed nut. The dome headed nut is just strictly there so you don't cut yourself on the sharp end of the grub screw. Next you need to release the nut that locks the grub screw and that's the first stage. Now from the, this end we will release the tension by undoing the grub screw and it's probably best to remove this completely and inside there there's a follower which drops out so we'll remove that. If you can it's probably better to put caps on the valve like I've got here. This just protects the knife edge from fingers and anything that might catch it. The next thing we do is undo the screws that hold the valve together. Now I've done, done all the screws, we just need to remove them. And this now allows us to remove the lower body, which just be careful when you remove it. Uh, this is where the Mallory pad seals on the base. And this is the Mallory pad, which is the item we're going to change, and the gold seal. Uh, we can just drop this out and then we can go to the gloves. Now you can see there's some few items which has fallen out of the valve inside so uh, that's what we've got to clean up. Uh, the first thing we can do is actually remove the pad and that's what this tool is for. That's the old pad removed. And now replace it with a new pad, but before you do that, just get your lymph-free cloth, some isopropanol, and just wipe round the diaphragm assembly, just to make sure there's no particles in there. Next thing is to get the new pad. And screw into the body. With the pad fitted, I've got a new piece of cloth now to lay these out on, these are all clean components. Uh, we've got the gold seal, the diaphragm and the body assembly. So what you do now 
is first of all make sure that this is clean. So a lint free cloth again and some alcohol, just wipe round the inside. Just make sure it's clean, nothing on there. Uh, next thing you do is drop the gold wire sill into the recess, making sure that it's in. And then put the diaphragm in next. It's easy to assemble this way as it can be a bit of a fiddle the other way around. And then place the top on to the lower assembly though. Now you can add in the screws and tighten them. So we have the valve fully assembled now and all you need to do is when you're doing the bolts up make sure they're even and make sure that the uh, two parts are face to face. The next part to do is to set up the arm, which normally somebody's been fiddling with this at some point and the arms are not in the correct place. These need to be slightly open or parallel and the easiest way of doing that to check the gap is with a 4mm Allen key. So you simply put it in between the valve and the arm and adjust it until the arm just opens and you know then you've got a 4mm gap. The next thing you need to do is wind the control knob in until it stops and then you can fit the second locking one behind. Uh, this has a washer which you put on first and then place the second nut on there. It's a very very fine thread and as you can see it's a little bit of a fiddle to start. Get off now. And then the two parts just simply lock them together. The other thing you need to be aware of is when it's set in this position you need half a turn. The reason we allow half a turn, if it does develop a very small leak it just gives you a little bit more turn which may seal it. Uh, for this you may need an M2 Allen key just to release this. Just to be clear how this is set up, uh, you can see the line here which is the index mark and the zero on the wheel. Uh, if I turn the wheel half a turn then that's fully locked off. So if your valve does develop a very small leak then usually half a turn is enough. So make sure that when you set the valve up that you do have the, at least half a turn on the valve. Next you need to assemble the plunger which just simply drops in. Then the grub screw and it's very important here just do it tight don't do it over tight just so it's firm and then that's ready now to be leak checked. To leak check it's important when you're doing this only pinch this up very slowly as you go. Uh, pump it down, leak check it. If there's a leak keep going until the leak stops. Once the leak stops open the valve about three or four turns and then close the valve again. If the valve leaks just go a few more degrees on the grub screw until the valve seals. So you may have to repeat this exercise a few times until it's actually there. So with the valve fully set, the first thing you do, put the washer on, put the nut on and just lock it off. It is best just to try and leak check it once you do that, just in case you've moved it. Then put the dome nut onto the top, do up and that you are now a working valve. If this was the diaphragm kit you were replacing, which is this item here with the gold seal, then it's you just simply take the old diaphragm assembly out, throw it away and replace it with this. This is already set up so you just drop this in uh, as shown in the previous part of the video. Hope you found this interesting on how to do the LVM valve. It's a question we get asked a lot, so this guide should give you a better understanding of how it works. There is some information in the manual if you have the manual, so look for that or you can find it on the website. If you've found this video interesting, please subscribe to our channel.
Thanks for watching.